Hi, Julie Usher, Recipes for a Sweet Life. In a recent video, I made this cool 3D castle cookie, which makes a striking centerpiece for a child's birthday. And in this video, I'm gonna make an equally cool project, though a lot smaller. I'm gonna make these fun 3D li lizards, kind of lazy lizards, if you will. They look a little sleepy. But they're of a perfect scale for a birthday party favor. They also involve little to no icing. They're just textured dough and a little bit of fondant. So they're easy enough for you to make yourself or for you to just make the component parts and have the kids assemble them at the birthday party. They also make use of a product that I've been having a lot of fun with lately, the Sugar Veil line of products. In addition to making the Sugar Veil lace material, they make silicone mats for making the lace, but the mats also come in handy for texturing dough. I've used their meshes mat here to create this very lifelike lizard skin. So let's talk about what cookies you'll need for this project. Basically, it's a seven cookie project. You'll need one three inch dome that's been textured. Again, I'm working with sugar veil mats and this is textured with their mesh mat and I'll show you that in a second. You'll need a little piece for the head also textured with the mesh mat. Two matching feet for either side, a back haunch and a front haunch, also textured with the mesh mat. And then the tail, which is formed using another form of cookie mold. Along the way, I'll be calling for other things to create this finished end product. I'll be calling for various luster dusts, luster sprays, and fondant for the fin and horn. So I'll introduce those items as we go along. You can also see the full list of them in the what you'll need list that's popping up on the video screen. So let's talk about how we got some of these fun shapes. But let's start with the easy one, which is the tail. It does not use the sugar veil mat. Instead, it uses a, a normal, I think it's a cream horn mold for making cookies. And I can get two tails out of this piece. So I'm just gonna pack it. This particular mold's oven proof and I always get the best imprints when I bake in molds in the oven. So I'm just gonna pack it till it's flat, not worried and try to get it as fitted into the inside as possible because that'll mean less trim when it comes out of the oven. And that'll go in the oven bake at the normal 375 for about 10 minutes, cool slightly, pop it out. And then if I need to, here's a finished piece. If there's any extra that didn't pack to the inside of the mold, or if I just want to give it a little more contour, I can take my paring knife and trim that up a little bit and get two out of it. The other thing I've done is I've sculpted the end so that it fit, will fit nicely against the rounded shape of the lizard's body later. Now I'm gonna to turn to the other pieces, which are all textured, namely the head, the body, and the various feet, and show you how I created those using the Sugar Veil mat, which is normally used for making edible cake lace, but we're gonna use it instead for embossing the dough. Here's the actual mat we're gonna use. It's called their mesh mat. It's only oven proof up to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's why I'm creating an imprint, then transferring the pieces off the mat onto a cookie sheet and baking them that way because we bake at 375 typically this particular recipe. First thing I want to do is get my rolling surface ready and for that I use a silicone baking mat typically. I'm going to get my dough. I'm working with my gingerbread dough. The recipe can be found in the video description. Other doughs will work as long as they don't have a lot of leavening and spread because if they spread too much you'll lose the texture. So I just want to get this started and still be able to lift it in nicely in one piece. I'm keeping flour off the top surface because this is going to, going to go down, face down on the mat, and I don't want to press flour into the dough that I'm embossing. Now, you'll notice on this dome piece, I've got the wide part of the mesh coming right down his back. So I want to make sure that when I cut that piece, I cut, you know, when, when I press the dough into the mat, that I do center it, if I've got a small piece of dough, on the piece that I want to capture. I'm just going to put that piece of dough down, face side down, flour side up. Dust the back side a little bit more so my pin doesn't stick to it. And roll it pretty thin because the thinner it is, the better it ends up looking typically. Now I do like to invert this once again on my silicone baking mat so this can go, I can cut directly on this and this can go directly in the oven from here. And without any flouring, you'll notice how nicely the sugar veil mat pulls right off. I'm gonna be shaping the body over this dome, which is about three inches, but I need a bigger round cutter in order to get all the way around the dome. So this cutter is actually about four inches. I'm gonna save these extra pieces because we'll use them to cut the other head and feet, hopefully. And if I've nicely floured my silicone mat, that should lift right off. I'm gonna bring this dome forward and I can just drape this over the top. 
Now there's a lot of slack and extra excess. You want to just gradually work that down to the edge. You want to get it centered on top. Just moved a little bit without pressing out the pattern. And so for that, I need to lift it and look at it a little more closely. Just gently pressing. I do want a pretty ample body. So I want to work out as much of those pleats as I can without pressing out the pattern. So here it is now all pressed out. I worked all the pleats out without working out much of the pattern. This would then go directly on the baking sheet and bake at 375 and then be popped off as I normally pop off my contoured cookie dough. So let's talk about the feet. They're pretty easy to do. And I cut them from whatever dough is left. The texturing there to me is less, gonna be less noticeable, less visible. So I don't worry about it coming right down the center. We'll cut out the two teardrop shapes. The dimensions of these teardrops will be in the video description and I need two for each side. And these will get formed, fitted up against the side of the round as they bake, kind of like so. Give them a little twist so that they hold their shape in the oven. I also, if you'll notice here, flattened the bottom of the back haunch just a little because I wanted it to sit flat against the bottom of the body of the animal when it's done. So I would just fit those up against the side. Again, slide that onto a silicone baking mat and put them all in the oven. Lastly, let's talk about the shaping of the head. For that, I use a little walnut mold. Again, this is for shaping cookies. And we are just gonna cut kind of a half circle. Don't worry if it's a little ragged, I'll trim this up once it gets up onto the mold out of the remaining, remaining dough. And just fit it over the end. The pointy part of this walnut is going to be, end up being the nose. So shape it like so. I'm gonna come back in, cut off a bunch of excess that we don't need. Also around the bottom. Gently pat it down, and then that's also ready to be baked. If you want a slightly more pointy nose, you can do some of that tweaking after it comes out of the oven when the dough is still warm. Just gently mold it while the dough is soft. Now here are all the pieces formed and ready to go into the oven. One note on this, I typically tend to bake like pieces at the same time. So do all the heads at once on one tray because they'll bake at closer to the same rate than some of these bigger and deeper pieces. Like the tail might take a little longer because it's pretty deep as well as the dome might because it's pretty large. So if you're doing many of them, do like sizes at the same time. Otherwise, you can put them in the oven like this and just watch them closely. Those that tend to brown more quickly, like the little pieces of the head and the feet, may need to be pulled sooner than some of the others. Off to the oven they go. So I want my lizard to be, my lizard or dragon, whatever it is, to be somewhat shiny. So the first step that I did was start by taking these naked parts and spraying them with my Pearl Luster Spray. Again, I'm working with a PME brand spray. So you want to give it a good shake first. I usually do a piece at a time, so I'll move off the big pieces, do the small pieces first. and Give it a test spray. and then work in small circular motions. Now, the advantage of an actual airbrush is it comes out with less pressure than some of these can sprays, so the pieces are less likely to move around. I'm gonna anchor these with my hands just a little bit so they don't move around on me so much. Of course, I'm airbrushing me a little bit or get it at a further, slightly further distance. Just gonna give it one last touch up here where I see some exposed brown parts, and there are all the lizard pieces done. I'm not worried about the back side of the feet because they'll ultimately be stuck against the body. Okay, so we're ready to give the guy a little color. And what I've got set up here is a little paint palette. Into this dish I have just my straight up liquid gel leaf green coloring, which I'm gonna do a dark green stripe down the middle. And then I'm gonna then pale that out with a little bit of yellow to do more of a lime green stripe around the underbelly of the lizard. Now, I don't want to put it down straight up, just solid green, because it'll be very, very dark. So I've thinned it in this area with a little bit of extract. You can also use water, but I find that the extract evaporates more quickly and is less likely to kind of really dampen the cookie. So I'm using a sponge brush for this technique, getting some color on there, but also sponging off the excess before I put too much on the lizard, because I just want a slight accent of green. And I'm going to start by just sponging gently up and down motion rather than a sliding motion because with the sliding motion I can get a lot of dark green into the lower areas and I'm just 
trying to keep it mostly on the high points if I can. Sometimes I'll do a little bit of a side to side motion, but only if I know I don't have a lot of color on the, on the sponge brush, because I don't want to get too much in those recesses. So we're going to continue all down the center area with that. And as I use up paint, I'm going to have to mix a little bit more. It's nice to have a test cookie near you to try the color on, which I always do before you put it on your finished product. Get a little more on the sponge brush, gonna blot it dry. It is a little bit darker, so I may end up going over the whole thing a little bit more. Any unevenness in color like that amount there, I'll probably, you know, it's fine. It looks a little more natural, but I may, I'll tend to even it out a little bit more because I'm gonna apply some Just dry dust at the end to just kind of even out any variations in color. Okay, so I think the green on the top is kind of nice. It's a little softer than the example I have off to the side, but that'll do for lizard. And it's still shiny, so you still see a lot of that pearl dust coming through. Now, without much cleaning, I'm just going to add some yellow, like quite a lot of yellow to this. I might actually mix off to, it might actually mix off to the other side. and take my brush that had yellow on it and create more of a lime green color for here, for the, the belly. I'm gonna blot a little bit here and just start by sponging lightly. Rather than spreading. So again, it's more of an up and down motion, less spreading to keep it out of the low parts. A little bit in the low parts looks good. Now I'd finish these feet in the same way, maybe just with a little bit of light green. Same thing with the head. The tail also, I'm just putting a little light green highlights on the top. And here I'm using a little more of a spreading motion. I just want to get the high points, the ridges on the tail. Oops. And I'm finding that a gentle kind of swipe gets them pretty fast. gets my hands too, but that's okay. Okay, so the tail is done, the feet are done, and I do the head in the same way as I would do the body. If you feel like the color gradations are too abrupt or you've lost some sheen, you can come back in with dry dusts. I've got a super green CK, a yellow, and also a pearl. You can come in with dry dusts and dry brushes to sort of enhance color if you feel like you need to, to blend colors between areas and to add a little more sheen. I feel like this one looks really good the way it is, so I'm really not going to do much of that. Typically, I just dump a little dust on my work surface out of the container, get it on the brush, tap it off so I don't have a ton on the brush, and just apply it. One area where it might be useful to have a little more blending is through here, so I'll take a little of that dark green and just smudge it along the seams. When I run out of dust, I just, rather than taking it directly out of the receptacle each time with the brush and potentially contaminating it, I put it on my work area and brush from here. Now let's talk about some of the embellishments that have gone on this guy here. I've got some fondant pieces that were laid on, namely the horns are done in a dark green fondant, this color here. We've got a fin that's going down in a light green fondant. It's going to get a little airbrushing. And we've got eyes that are made out of the dark green fondant, black fondant, and also some little yellow candy balls. So I want to start by making the eyes and the horns because they need to dry completely before they go on the lizard, whereas the fin gets applied when it's still able to be molded and shaped. So the fin will get made last right as we're assembling the pieces, the whole lizard. Okay, so for the horns, simply Take the little green fondant and just create a tapered rope, basically. You can do this either on your cutting board or in your hands pretty successfully. And I like to do one really long one, big one for the center, right between the eyes, and then taper them off so they get smaller and smaller as they come towards the side of his head. So this might be one for the center. We'll set them off to the side. You could cut one down it's already big to create a smaller one. So really easy to make those horns and you'd want to make six or seven of them 
to go all the way around his head. I've got some pre-made that are already dry that we'll attach in a moment. Now for the eyes, they look a little funny here, but this is how they're going to be placed side by side so you don't see any of this sort of seam on the back. I chose to use little yellow candy beads. These are about a five millimeter bead is my guess. They're a little bigger than the normal drage. And for them, I've rolled out a little bit of black fondant to the number three setting on my pasta machine. So I've got a nice piece of green rolled fondant as well. And this is gonna form the eyelid. Okay, so first things first, let's cut out the, the pupil of the eye with the black. And for that, I'm using a tiny tip. I don't have a cutter that small, so I'm using a number five tip, round tip. And it tends to like to stick in there. So to push it out, I push it out with a paintbrush, something that's not going to leave a big dent in it. We're going to need two of those for these eyeballs for both sets. So let's get them out. They look small now, but I'm going to press them slightly into the eyeball so it will get a little flatter and bigger as we go through that process. I also want to cut out my eyelids. For that, I'm using the other side of the tip. And I'm just going to cut that in half so I can get two eyelids out of each round. Now taking a little bit of, moving the beads aside, bringing in a little corn syrup, just a touch. I'm gonna to put a touch in the center and that's where I'm going to attach my pupil. If it's hard to pick up, take, take the tip of your trussing needle place it on there, and then I like to press it down a little bit just to round it out a touch and to flatten it closer to the eye. So same thing to get the eyelid on, similar process. I'm going to take my eyelid, turn it over to the back side, put a little bit of corn syrup on it to act as glue. I don't need much. And I'm going to cover it like about half, I like to cover, whoops, about half of the pupil with the eyelid, just so he looks kind of like a sleepy lizard. Then I just simply shape, press all the extra green to the back of the eye. And if there's a lot of extra, you can kind of pull some of it off. But this is, you just want to shape it so as it's looking at you, it looks like a nice shape and he's completely wrapped an eyelid and I like that. So that'll be one eyeball and that's basically how I would do the other one. I'd like to set those aside to dry till they're easier to handle, at least partially dry, because they'll be less likely to misshape when we actually get them on the lizard. So now to make the fin that's going to run down the back and the tail, I'm working with a light green fondant and by contrast to the pieces I just made where I rolled it out to like a number three or number four setting and got it really thin, I've rolled it only to my number one setting, which is about an eighth of an inch thick, because I want this to have enough body that even when it's not dry, I can flex it up and contour it to the back of the lizard. So I need to work with this while it is not completely set. Now to do this, I've rolled it out, as I said, and I'm gonna use this fluted round cutter that I just happen to have to cut these pieces. I've got one that I finished earlier and it completely set, and so this is gonna be hard to fit to the body of another one, but that gives you an idea of the direction I'm headed. So I'm cutting the edge and we're going to add some contours. You'll also notice that I want the fin to be thicker in the middle and kind of taper down towards the head and the tail. So to do that, I've got another round cutter that I'm going to use to do that. I'm just placing it such that I have it tapered at the front and the bottom. Okay. And I think I'm going to need a little extra piece for the tail. And so I'm going to cut another little ridge in the extra here and just cut this a little shallower. It doesn't need to be nearly as thick. And in fact, I'll cut it to a nice point at the end. So that'll be the end of the tail and this will be somewhat towards the top. We'll trim these more as they get onto the body of the animal in the next step. But to add this dimension, I, I just wanted to show you what I did. I simply scored with my paring knife 
You can also use like a pizza wheel to run through here, but you don't want to go all the way through or you'll cut through the fin and you don't want to do that. And you can do this to, back, to both sides of the fins. Here on video, I'm just doing it to one, but on the lizards that I have in demo, I did it to both sides so that it views nicely from either angle. So now we're ready to airbrush these. And then instead of using color mist, which you could use, color mist comes in a can in green. I'm using an actual airbrush because you can get much more control with it, much more precise placement, and it doesn't push with nearly the same force if you have it on low speed, low compressor speed. So this isn't going to blow around quite as much. So I'm using my particular airbrush, which is a single action airbrush and operates on three levels. And I'm going to turn it on now and, and I'm going to be spraying at kind of a 45 degree angle just to kind of shoot up each of these little lines that I scored to give it a little green burst of green. But I'm going to do this on the lowest setting so it doesn't fly around too much. So here goes. Trying to roughly line the, get it to spray right on the line, which is a little tricky. So you get the feeling for it. And now I feel like I, I've got it coming along. Just adds a nice kind of lifelike kind of highlight. I'm kind of spraying sideways. And you can see it doesn't get nearly as airborne as some of those other sprays that I've been working with. If I can get a little darker at the base, that's kind of nice too. I feel like this one needs a little more darkness there. Maybe there too, there too. Whoops, now he really needs to be held down just because it's a much lighter weight piece. Yeah, that looks good. And now if I were doing both sides, I'd wait th for those to dry a few minutes, flip them over, and do the exact same thing. Okay, so my now that the fin's done, and it's fin, mind you, is still pliable. It has to be, or I won't be able to get it up on the lizard. The first thing I want to do is get it mounted on. So I'm just going to use a teeny bit of thick royal icing green glue to get it in place. Very, very little. You'll see how nicely it conforms to the top of the dome. If any is sticking out, I can clean that up later. We're just going to anchor it in a couple of spots, really at the top and also at the bottom, the back side, because that's all that's really needed. And the less glue I have to clean up, the better. And I'm going to, I've, I've, I've situated it such that my head should come in right about here. So that's good. I've got a little bit of a turn on it, which I kind of like. I'm going to anchor it down here as well. And then the next thing to do is to cut off the extra and put the head into it while it's still wet so that we don't crack the fondant. And if this shifts, we can just lean it back a little bit until it fully sets. So for this, again, a little bit of green glue. get all those pieces in place. And you'll notice I'm working on a cardboard again for the very good reason that you don't want to move this thing until all the pieces are completely, completely dry. This extra glue, it's okay if it shows there because I'm going to put some horns there to conceal that. The next piece I want to get on is the tail again while the fondant is still pliable. So I'm going to be pushing it into here. I can cut off some of this down here to make room for it. And we'll glue that right up against the edge. I'm looking overhead just to make sure he's somewhat centered. Now I've got this little tail piece that can go down the tail as well, or not. That's completely optional. I think to do it, I want to cut it a little bit shorter. It's, it's wanting to break at a certain point anyway, because it's a little dried out. So you have to move kind of fast with this. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to piece it in from the back so it looks more continuous with the, with the fin that I just put down. Again, just tacking it with glue where needed. As little glue as I'm using, you'll be amazed when it's 
completely set, it should all conform in one nice piece. And I'm just shaping it along the top of the tail and tacking it at the very end. So it kind of follows the contour there. It's nice to score the both back sides of the fin. So this views nicely from both sides, which I haven't done here. But I'll show you it on the finished piece. So there he is taking shape. Next step is to put down these big horns. Having a little bit of fondant there for it to rest up against is nice because it'll tend to hold it in place. Now, mind you, these horns are completely dry, so I'm actually applying a fair bit of pressure to hold them in place. And you can line them all up straight or put them at little odd angles to each other. I like them a little bit angled, cleaning up kind of extra glue there at the base. And I'm, I started with the big one, and I'm kind of tapering off to smaller and smaller ones as we go to the sides. Looking pretty good. Let me get that foot on now. And we'll get the other side of horns, and then we'll put on the eyes and any finishing touches. So these eyes that we made earlier, I'm just sticking down with a little more royalizing glue. And I want him kind of looking at me, so I'll turn him towards you when I'm done because I'm positioning his eyes. So he's kind of looking like he's a little lazy, sleepy lizard. Great. And so for the last details, just to clean it up a little bit and to give it some little highlights because it's mostly all green, we're going to turn back to my handy icing of beadwork consistency and lay down some orange dots and yellow dots. And ideally, I would wait for everything to be completely dry before I do this because there's some chance of knocking things off in this process. Again, all my icing consistency adjustments can be found in the link in my video description. And you could detail him any number of ways. So get creative if you're going to do this project. This project's one you could do assemble completely and give his favors at a birthday. Or you could just make the components and have the kids kind of put them, them together at the party. It's kind of a fun project that way too. Let's see if I can get the orange on these horns. They're still loose, so I don't want to knock them off. So there he is with his orange dots. I'm going to do some yellow dots now as a finishing touch down through the center. And let's just make sure this icing's a little looser than the last I had. The last was leaving some peaks that I didn't quite like. I think that's good. And I'm going to start them very tiny down here and get them kind of gradually fatter as they move towards the center of the lizard. It's nice to have your cones pretty full for this task so that you can reach into these harder to reach places. And there you have it. The one last detail I have over here, I have actually a fondant feet on the one over here, but we're gonna skip them. I think he looks good with just the feet as they are. I did also stick in a few little yellow dots down here around the face, again, to kind of conceal the joints between the horns. I think that finishes it off rather nicely. And there he is, Lazy Lizard, all finished. And so, once completely dry, believe it or not, even with that minimum amount of glue, the lizard is something that you can pick up and then place into crumbs. I've got him arranged here in graham cracker crumbs. Normally, though, I'd keep him on the cardboard until I'm ready to arrange him. So I hope you enjoyed making this lazy lounge lizard as much as I did. If you're interested in more textured cookie videos, please check out my castle video and also my enameled cookie box video, which is part of a bigger Sugar Veil collaboration. Until next video, live sweetly.